So now that you've begun to understand how to recognize resistors in series, we're going to see how we can combine them. Now, I've given you a much simpler circuit here where it's pretty apparent that the 10 ohm is in series with the 15 ohm, and that the 15 ohm is in series with the 5 ohm, and therefore all three of those resistors are in series with one another. So I can actually calculate the equivalent resistance for all three of those resistors. It'll be 10 ohms plus 15 ohms plus 5 ohms, that's um, that's going to end up being a total of 30 ohms. Now the place where it connects to the rest of the circuit is there's a connection point here and there's a connection point here. So I could of course draw the, the resistor in diagonally and it would look something like this. But we don't tend to like to have diagonal resistors in our circuits. Um, they just kind of seem to make things a little bit more confusing. The good news is that I can stretch any wire that I want to, or I can also compress any wire that I want to. So I'm going to, I'm going to redraw the remaining portion of the circuit like this. So I have 15 volts. I'm going to go ahead and stretch that one over to here. And I'm going to go ahead and compress the other one so that they line up nice and even. And then I'm going to draw the equivalent resistor. I'm going to draw the equivalent resistor in between those. So here I have a 30 ohm resistor and it's connected to the 15 volt source. Now notice that this current I, which is the ultimate goal of, of the circuit analysis, that I is flowing around the entire circuit. You know, I is here, I is here, and for our purposes, most importantly, I is right here as well. And because that portion of the circuit right there didn't get disturbed, I can redraw I over here. So I goes right there. Now, the portion of the circuit that got disturbed, the 10 ohm, the 15 ohm, and the 5 ohm, some information got lost. Uh, that information would be about the voltage across each of those individual resistors. We'll talk about that next time. Uh, but for right now, the portion of the circuit that didn't get disturbed is, is the left-hand side. And because the current I flows around the left-hand side, we can, we can duplicate it in the, in the simplified version of the circuit diagram. So what we're asked to do is to find I, although it would be kind of hard to find I in the, in the original circuit, not impossible, but kind of hard, it is totally easy to find it in the revised circuit because I is just going to be the current through a single resistor and that's 15 volts, 15 volts divided by 30 ohms gives me 0 0.5 amps. So just a simple application of Ohm's law allows us to find the current that's flowing around that entire circuit. Now what we technically found was the current that's flowing around the simplified circuit, but because the simplified circuit is entirely equivalent to the original circuit, we also found the current that was flowing in the original circuit as well. So 0.5 amps. Let's consider this example where we now have a current source, and what we'd like to know is the voltage across the current source. Clearly we have three resistors that are, are pretty obviously in, in series with one another. So those three resistors can be combined together. So our equivalent is going to be 4 plus 3 plus 2, which works out to be 9 ohms. I can redraw the circuit so that I have just a 9 ohm resistor. I have that same unknown voltage and I still have and I still have a 2 amp source. So notice that this, this portion of the circuit here was undisturbed. Nothing changed, uh, sort of to the left of here, I guess I would say nothing really changed. And we're going to say, you know, that we can stretch those terminals out. And that's kind of what we've done over here is we, we can stretch them out so that these are sort of those same two terminals where nothing to the left of that dotted line changed. Well, now again, it's just Ohm's law. The voltage, the unknown voltage is going to be the current times the resistance, which is going to be 2 amps times 9 ohms, which it works out to be 18 volts. So in each of these two examples, we were able to combine a res uh, uh, two or three, or uh, in this case, three resistors together to find an equivalent resistance, draw a simplified circuit, and then from that simplified circuit, apply Ohm's law to be able to find an important quantity that was unknown.